Okay, so we managed to get back online and uh, we are live again and we'll start with uh, speeches again in uh, a minute. Thank you. Back from home? Yeah. You're on. Which, which, which speech is Benji? Thank you, Juan, for this ni nice introduction. I'm happy to be here with you and with this wonderful audience today. I hope you hear me loud and clear. And as you know, sometimes it might happen that we might have some technical difficulties that are arising. So this is something that you need to, I would not say get used to, but know about this and take it sort of easy. Imagine how we- I'm having a trouble with echo here. Okay. Uh what a what a great fit for this uh, for this world, where many of us are unable to travel um, with either with great difficulty or not at all, and in many ways this also is a foreshadow of how humanity will use electronic communications to bridge gaps as we go out into space. Uh, some of us will be journeying into space. I'm sure many of us among us will eventually. Uh, uh, be going out into space and want to stay in contact with family and colleagues back on earth and so we're kind of guinea pigs in that right now in this uh in this effort here now uh, with the the problems as guptik has just mentioned there's some hiccups along the way but uh, we'll be overcoming them so at this point i'd like to uh, comment on how uh, unique this isp program is and in particular what a remarkable thing is that it's been put together with uh, with the uh, you know broad participation of the ISU staff, the president, the program director, but all the staff members, and all those uh, uh, those that have agreed to to lecture and the mentors around the world, thank you so much to all of those. This has been put together in very trying conditions. I would say many people in quarantine and other stresses related to the pandemic. So pulling something so so incredible together is uh, is really fantastic, and I'd like to. Thank each and everyone who has worked on this. Thank you so much. And now let me address the class of 2020, the ISP class of 2020. So congratulations on being in here. You know, ISU has a quite a stringent selection process for all its programs. And if you've been accepted to participate in this program, congratulations are definitely in order. Well done. You're probably excited, eager, ready for this program to begin. I know that feeling. As, uh, as Goktuk mentioned, about a third of a century ago in 1988, I was a student in your shoes waiting for that first ISU program to begin on the MIT campus in, in Boston, uh, USA. That program was similar in many ways to your own. Um, similar number of students from a similar number of countries from around the world but it was also different. Um, not only did we not use the internet um, in those days, the internet hadn't even been invented yet, uh, nor had laptop computers, not even cell phones existed. So how lucky this pandemic is happening today when we have these uh, modern communication tools. But one thing that was very similar to the current, uh, to the current program is that the uh, excitement, the enthusiasm, I would say even the passion of the participants uh, was very similar. And so I can assure you that you're about to embark on a incredible journey of learning about space activities from all aspects, you know, technical aspects, business aspects, policy aspects, even sociological aspects, learning about space and its role in the world around us uh, and learning about each other. And on that last point about learning about each other, let me emphasize something. Your 86 classmates, crew members from around the globe, like you, they've all been chosen for their past academic achievements, their interest and commitment to space activities, and perhaps most importantly, their potential for leadership within the global space community in the future. So take advantage of this opportunity to get to know them, 
to become friends. You know, uh, when we ask our alumni of ISU a year after they graduate from one of our programs, what was most beneficial to them? They often will say, it was the great things I learned in the, in the lectures, the interdisciplinary nature, all that excitement of the program. But when we ask that same question five years or 10 years after graduation from an ISU program, invariably what we hear is the most important aspect of what they gained from that program was this network of friends around the globe that are um, in key positions in the space program and the benefit that had for their careers as well. So if you, uh, you know, if you, you look around you virtually as you begin the program in, a, in, a, in the coming hours today, look around at your, your fellow crew members there. These are the future space leaders in the global academic community, the future leaders and senior managers in space agency, and the captains of space industry. So take advantage of that unique opportunity you have this summer to get to know them and uh, form the bonds with them, as well as with the mentors and the lecturers and the others you'll come in contact with. So again, congratulations having been selected to participate in this program. Take advantage of it to learn about the different aspects of space world, to dream the big dreams, and with your crewmates to formulate the plans and how to put those uh, dreams into reality. I know you'll be changing the space world and the world at large in the years to come. Thank you and congratulations again. Thank you much, Chris, uh, for this very rewarding address, I should say. I'm sure everybody is really excited. Okay, next we will connect to Germany to Miss Pascal Ehrenfreund. So Pascal is uh, the chair of the German Space Agency DLR, executive board, and also she is the chancellor of International Space University. Pascal, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh I have an echo, so probably somebody has to um, mute something. I hope you, you can um, hear me well. So dear ISP uh, participants, crew members, dear president, staff, faculty, sponsors, mentors, everybody also on the internet, my, my, my colleagues, uh, which are helping today in the opening ceremony as uh, the chancellor of the International Space University, I really want to welcome you as well to the first edition of the Interactive Space Program of 2020. And it has been mentioned already, I have changed that. Uh, you are now 86 motivated participants from uh, all over the world, namely 30 different countries. And I think this is fantastic. As you know, and I think we have to have a serious moment in, 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 in this discussion, we are currently, I think, worldwide in a real emergency situation. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, followed by economic crisis, travel restrictions, social distancing, um, they change our daily life and how we interact. Uh, and uh, as Chris already said, uh, we maybe have to learn uh completely uh, to communicate in a different way uh also to teach uh, to learn and uh, to com uh, communicate and this is probably just the beginning and uh it will really boost the age of digitalization yeah um i think what um additionally to this situation a very positive attribute is that science is valued and probably you have seen that as well there are many additional uh, funds uh, which are available to advance science and technology in the future. And uh, I think what is also important for this um, class is that you will see also space plays a fundamental role in uh, for society. And you will discuss many of the important topics uh, in the next five weeks, uh, weeks. You will learn how important space is for society, but uh, 
it is certainly different than usual summer schools where you drink beer together in the evening. Um, I hope you will make uh, the most of it and engage with your colleagues, uh, teachers and mentors uh, over the internet. Uh, you have uh, a really, really interesting program. I've seen that. Um, uh, you are looking at the practical aspects of space and pandemics, uh, remote sensing applications, satellite communication technology, artificial intelligence, uh, telemedicine, um, so many really, really important topics. And of course, also international cooperation uh, in the space sector, which is a very, very crucial uh, topic. Uh, as the chair of the German Aerospace Center, um, uh, as well as an astrobiologist, I can uh, really stress uh, the significance of space technologies. Uh, when you look at global health crises, uh, such as the one which we are facing uh, today, and through uh, elements like Earth observation, telemedicine and spin-off technologies, we can really uh, support both on the national but also on the global uh, level um, uh, different policies. So uh, also at the German Aerospace Center, we have immediately started research initiatives to address the COVID-19 pandemic. For instance, our research aircraft fleet did measurements in the atmosphere. We have sent several of our uh, research uh, aircraft uh, to, um, uh, to look at uh, the reduction of emissions, you know, in, in the atmosphere because of the um, um, uh, reduced air transport, but also on Earth, we have been really looking uh, what are the implications. Uh, we have uh, delivered a lot of Earth observation data to important uh, organizations like the World Bank uh, so that they can really uh, target uh, a very Im important topics concerning uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so we also engaged in studies concerning the transfer behavior, which of course has changed. So there are so many, many topics. Uh, you will address some of them, of course, space oriented, but um, you will see that there are many, many different topics uh, which are really crucial uh, for society. So um, I think uh, Chris has said already so much about it and I don't really want to repeat it, but not only do you uh, learn new skills and, and, and practices, you are actually, you will be embedded, you know, in a network of more than 4,600, as I look just at the website, it's actually 4,800 space professionals. So, uh, and uh, alumni, is this a network which will really determine uh, your future. And I hope that you are using these networks future. You are now a part of the ISU and I hope you too will be able to make new connections. And I would finally also like to, uh, to thank all the staff, faculty, alumni, program sponsors and partners for their generous contributions of time. I think we all have to do that because it is much more complicated to organize such a program really on the internet. And you see that we all still have digital uh, hurdles. And I really want to thank them. I think uh, everybody is aware how difficult is, how all this is to set up also on a short notice. And uh, there was really a lot of effort which went into the preparing this program. So uh, Juan also mentioned already, we had uh, uh, the first of several Mars mission launched successfully this night in Europe. It was just at midnight. It was really uh, nice from the United Arab Emirates. And uh, we hope their orbiter uh, hope uh, will be successful on Mars. And there are two other missions uh, which are on the way, uh, Mars 2020 and Tianwen one And so you have a really, really exciting um, uh, uh, program ahead. You have a great start and I wish you a great, great learning experience during the ISP and that I really hope that this program uh, and all the connections uh, you are actually finding and all the interactions you have will guide all your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Have fun.
Thank you very much, Pascal, for joining us from Germany. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Pascal uh, in this opening ceremony, but it will not be the only time that, that we will host her during the session. Hello, I'm so happy to share with you the highest B20 expedition lounge. On the space Today. pandemics and what, uh, what Europe is doing, what DLR is doing on that, we will further discuss that topic with um, Pascal's participation on the third of August. And another thing which we also touched in, in this uh, talk was uh, ISU is definitely all for science, all for STEM, but actually not only STEM, we now call it STEAM. So we add art into the STEM education, which is a very important humanistic concept uh, for us at ISU. So on that very note, I would like to also add some art into this very launch expedition now. Uh, Philip Geis, some of you may have known him, is a world-renowned saxophonist from Strasbourg, a local from here. He has been collaborating with ISU for several years, and his album Galax Sax is dedicated to his friend and ESA astronaut Thomas Peske. So let's just go, and I think Philip has some things to say to us. Philip, over to you. Hello. I'm so happy to share with you the highest B20 expedition lounge. Today, I would like to introduce you one of my composition called Infinity. This music was inspired by my friend Thomas Pesquet. When Thomas was on the International Space Station, he said that for him, our planet seems like a small boat with no lifeboat. These words brought to me a very deep emotion and a great inspiration. This music is based on some medieval chords found by my friend Jean-Francois Zigel when he was working on the music for the Strasbourg Cathedral. Thanks to Thomas who gave me the great inspiration to compose a melody on this chords to bring this music to the star's infinity. I hope you will like to share with me this music and this special vibration into the space.
Thank you very much, Philip, for this lovely artistic touch to our program. But please don't go anywhere because I, I, I want to come back to you and listen more of this. But let's stay in our Mission Control Center for a while now because um, I have the great honor to have one of our commanders of our expedition with me here today. Uh, some of our um, guests and definitely the crew members already know him from the introductions this morning. Mr. Francois Spiro is with us here today. On behalf of all the commanders, I just want to actually ask Francois, you have been part of this journey with us for a long, long time. It has been months of preparations and a lot of like dreaming and now it's time to execute. But can you just tell us uh, a bit of what happened so far and anything else you want to share? Thanks a lot, Göktug, and uh, hello, everybody. It's my pleasure and honor to, to say a few words, as you just said, not only on my behalf, but on behalf of all the commanders and officers and everybody who is running this very new and fantastic session, the ISP. Uh, maybe to, to give a little bit of insight of how we came to, to this situation. I'm an old guy. I've been a student at ISU back in 89. At that time, there was only one program of ISU called the Summer Session Program and the SSP. And that program still exists today and is a very important and great program of ISU. So that was back in the late 80s, early 90s. About 10 years later, in the late 90s, a new program came in and that was the Master of Space Studies, the MSS, which many uh, people around the globe know about. And about 10 additional years later came uh, the uh, Southern Hemisphere Summer Program, the SHSSP. And now, a few more years after that, a new program again, the ISP, the in uh, Interactive Space Program. And I would like to say that this program is very much in tune with, in tune with the current uh, 21st century. We are living in a digital age. We are heading towards the moon, towards Mars and in orbit. Gradually, humanity will become a multi-planet species as we are currently experiencing in the ISP with people on the moon, on Mars, in orbit, it's, and here at the mission control. So this new program looks very um, in tune with the uh, period, but it's also looks, it also looks very exciting. As was said before, tens of people have been uh, working to make this program happen. I'm very confident, I'm very optimistic that it will be a success. Good luck to everybody. Let's start the journey. Thank you so much, Francois. And uh, well, we also wish you all the commanders the good luck as well in this five week journey. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so it is getting exciting. The countdown clock is ticking, I can see it. But actually there is another very important component of this mission, of course, rather than the Mission Operations Center is the crew members. So as we said, we are launching a lot of people from a lot of different locations today to different space habitats. And one of these crew members is actually experienced. So he had a mission with ISU before. So I possibly can call him also a flown astronaut as one called one of our uh, members earlier in the program. So let's just make a live connection, if possible, to Japan, Tokyo, Japan now. And one of our crew members, Satoru Kruso, is waiting for us there. And I know that, uh, Satoru, it's, it's very exciting. We are just about to launch. But what do you feel? And uh, actually, I should also say, welcome back on an ISU mission. Over to you. OK, yeah. Good afternoon. Good morning and good evening from Japan, distinguished and ladies and gentlemen. My name is Satoru Cross. I'm Space Business Development Executive of Yokogawa Electric Corporation, the leading automation company which is diversifying into space. First of all, on behalf of ISP20 crew, I'd like to thank ISU very much for the intensive preparation, including pre-expedition trainings. 
Before ISP start, we have already learned a lot. It's a lot of fun. We feel that we are already the team. Last year, I attended ISU ESC Executive Space Course in April in Strasbourg. I could efficiently learn the total picture of space, space in all the disciplines to work closely together. My classmates are from various sectors with various disciplines, engineers, business persons, entrepreneurs, investors, academia, and even a politician was there. I learned the importance of IS's three-eyed philosophy, interdisciplinary, international, and intercultural, with all the classmates who were passionate about space. We enthusiastically talked about space for the week, even after five. At the night on 11th April, the Israeli classmate organized a live seminar to watch the first private company's attempt to land the moon. After midnight of the day, we gathered again at the hotel lobby to watch the, watch the successful return of the two boosters of Hanfong Heavy. I could really feel the dynamic privatization of space industry. And of course, on 12th April, all the students and professors celebrated Yuri Gagarin with the vodka he loved. The week was unforgettable. It changed my life. After I came back from Strasbourg, I formed a cross-functional task force called Starship to promote space in my company. I see Alumni's global network was very helpful to do the job. Last month, we delivered a life science equipment to ISS Kibo module, Japanese experimental module. Now we are trying to participate in lunar exploration with a tunable diode laser spectroscopy technology to find water on the moon. I'm pleased to come back to ICU. The reason I'm back is I want to study more about space. Frankly, ESC was too short. Meet my new crew members who are passionate about space and co-innovate solutions which can contribute to sustainability on the Earth like one to prevent another pandemic. We ISP20 crew are looking forward to starting a new journey to space. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Saturo. And uh, basically, I know I can see that you are already very excited, but you are actually a very experienced group member as well. So definitely your peer crewmates, your fellow crewmates will make the best of uh, your experiences from your, let's say, short duration mission that, that you were on, on board at ISU before. But actually, let, be, before actually, if, if you are still here, I, I have a question. <laughs> You know very well that ISU and all of our missions, expeditions are not only about the, the academics, it's not just the academic learning experience, but what is really important is people learn from each other in an intercultural setting as well. So I just wonder, are you bringing like anything special with you to this mission that, that you want to share from your culture or, or your hobbies or any, anything you want to share with, with your uh, crewmates? This oh, one. wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can see a very, very nice electro guitar there. Cool, so which means, uh, Saturo, you're already part of the ISP20 band, I guess. So definitely you'll find a lot of other um, uh, fellow mates, uh, then we will make a very good uh, space party in the upcoming weeks. Cool, once again, uh, enjoy the ride and bon voyage. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's come back to Strasbourg for a while. Uh, so before we, we move on to the final launch sequence, as promised, I want to once again vis uh, visit Philip and want to hear his story about a new project he is working on. Philip, can you still hear us? Hello. Now I would like to talk to you about a project. First of all, 
I would say that I was always inspired by the space world and uh, astronauts and now ISU students and faculty. What a wonderful world. I'm so happy to already have several collaborations with ISU. My CD cover is a photo shooting done at the ISU meeting room. Um, I already have done some uh, TEDx conference on the ISU uh, University and also have uh, several occasions to play some music for you. Today, I would like to propose a new collaboration. I just finished a piece for saxophone and electronic background done with an electronic saxophone, by the way. And this piece is called Nebo. That's uh, a piece uh, really inspired by some far away galaxy dreamed in my uh, uh, brain. And um, I really would like to have some uh, space image um, on this uh, music and then I would like to propose to one of you or a group or I'm open to a lot of suggestion but I really would like to put some uh, image from the space on this music and uh, the world premiere of this piece is planned on December 1st in Epinal Planetarium in France. And then feel free to contact me through Geraldine, for example, if you would like to collaborate on this project. I hope that you would like to collaborate. Then please enjoy uh, this first preview, that just a preview with some suggested image I found uh, to just explain a little bit my idea. Then enjoy the preview of Nebo. Mm-hmm. 
thank you. Thank you very much, Flip, for, for joining us today. That was spectacular and it very well resonates exactly with what we are doing at ISU. So, ladies and gentlemen, our time is coming closer to the end of the launch sequence. But as we are making the final preparations, let's one last time turn our cameras to our VIP room, the ISU Cosmos Auditorium. As you possibly have noticed, we have some special guests, which is actually a new tradition that we decided to start by ISP program. Juan, the ISU president who is there, will tell us more. Juan, over to you. Thank you, uh, Gökto. We are following you very closely from the VIP room here in the Cosmos Auditorium. And we know that uh, during countdowns, it can happen that you have a uh, a data link problem that can interrupt the countdown. But uh, from what I hear from you, everything looks good now. All systems go. I would like to thank all the performers and the speakers so far. Uh, Chris, our chairman, Pascal, our chancellor, the two Philips from Strasbourg, uh, Philip, the city manager, and Philip, the musician. Uh, thank you also to Satoru, the astronaut musician. Uh, to Francois, our uh, senior faculty or commander, uh, to Lisa, uh, all the speakers who are getting ready for liftoff. And by now you have guessed how the crew members are represented here in the Cosmos Auditorium. Yes, you guessed right. We have 86 green plants here following a very nice tradition that started in 1961 when Yuri Gagarin decided that he wanted to be the first human to go to orbit. We believe he was the first, at least physically. And the tradition in Russia is that every cosmonaut and every space traveler who flies out of uh, Baikonur in Kazakhstan has to plant a tree. So here are the 86 trees or plants that each bear the name of our dear crew members. So you are invited to come here when you come back from your expedition and look at your tree or your plant. In the meantime, we will take good care of them and uh, we hope you take good care of yourselves. Now, one of these uh, plants, I believe, will be on camera in a moment. And uh, that one is uh, bearing the name of one of the crew members. Uh, her name is Amy Holt. Uh, Amy is from the UK, but very soon she will represent the whole of humanity when she will be out there at her outpost. Amy, I hope you had the time to capture the screen. Uh, but don't worry, we're taking pictures here. We have a professional photographer. and. Uh, when you come back, you will get uh, your picture. Now, you're supposed to concentrate on more important things than taking pictures as you get ready for liftoff in a couple of uh, minutes. Anyway, when you come back, we wait for you here and we will show you where your plant is. We hope you will have time to meet each of us at Central Campus and that you will have time to go to the ISU library. And we still have paper books and many of them are donated. So please make sure that if you have a space-related book, no matter when in your career, that you come and bring it here. Um, our librarian and all of our students and researchers will be very happy. Now with this, I would like to give the floor back to Mission Control for the final moment of countdown, where we also hope to finally meet the crew members. Over to you, Gökto. Thank you very much, and have a great one. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Juan. And I can see that our clock is uh, ticking and we are almost two minutes to launch, which is very exciting. We'll make a final check. Uh, but before that, uh, as, as you can see, uh, our Capcom, Lisa, has joined us now in the Mission Operations Center. Uh, she just came back from the VIP room and she will be on the console because, as you know, without a, a Capcom, we cannot have a mission. So, uh, Lisa, I, I, I think you're really excited. Like all the people you have been communicating uh, during the, the, the selection process, during the training process are going now and you will be their primary contact for the next five weeks. So is there anything you want to share with them before we hit the button? Yes, thank you so much. So now, hello hello again, but from a, from a new setting now, we are in a mission control and we just received a message that we are uh, go for launch and we have all other systems green. So this is a nice news. We, we are well prepared for this mission. Our dedicated team has worked really hard to make this mission happen. So, and just to share a quick atmosphere that we're having now in the mission control, people are all excited and we are just happy that we can, we can proceed to our launch right now. So thank you so much for all the team and thank you so much also crew for your hard preparations so now um as the clock is ticking down i would like to wish you a safe flight uh dear crew got speed and see you and talk to you where you will be in space already i'll be with you communicating once you're getting there and will accompany throughout your mission thank you thank you very much Leza, and good luck for the upcoming five weeks so uh, we are just uh, waving uh, bye to Lisa because she has to go to the console, then we can launch. Thank you for joining. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now this is the exciting time as we are coming close. Basically, the thing is now we have a big mission. After these five weeks, we will have a great connection. We will have great deliverables. And this team will present them not only just for uh, during the mission itself, but it will go out. We will go to decision makers. We will go and reach out all the things that they will be working on during the summer around the globe. So get excited and you will be definitely hearing a lot from us. One thing I just want to mention is there will be some, not many, some, so follow them carefully, events that we will broadcast to the public. So there will be some distinguished lectures, which one of them is actually just coming tomorrow. And then there will be a few panels like the astronauts panels uh, that you can uh, follow and watch online. And once the expedition is over, just on the very last day of the expedition, but uh, in August, we will basically have a live link from the teams and we will listen their story, their team mission presentation at the, at the very end. So please follow carefully uh, the ISU social media channels. We will be posting daily, if not hourly updates there. Okay, with that, I would like to once again have a quick look onto the console. I can see that the academics is go, research is go, Logistics is go, IT is go, uh, comms is go. Well, we have all the teams go, green lights there. With that, I would like to officially kick off the countdown of Expedition ISP 20. So the, dear crew, you will have two hour and uh, just about two hour actually to your destinations. And then you will start your exciting journey. So buckle up. I wish you a very, very smooth ride. So let's Count from 10. Final launch of Endeavour. Expanding our knowledge. Expanding our
Australia. Germany. Mm -hmm. 